Uh, welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how you can use a single value with the power of drivers to, to drive a bunch of different things like going between two different materials on an object and synchronizing a bunch of lights. And that makes animation so much easier because now all you have to do is animate this single value and you can adjust it quite easily and you don't have to adjust you know, every single object that you're doing this on. It's not complicated, honestly, I think it's a bit like coding. People are sometimes scared of getting into it because they think, ah, oh, you have to be some crazy math wizard. But really, it's quite simple and you just learn it step by step. And using drivers for this thing, I think that's a nice, easy first step. So let's get started. OK, the first thing we need is a place where we have our variable sitting. And I think it makes sense to put that on the toaster. So I select the toaster and now there are two main ways where we can add this variable under custom properties. You can do it in the object data, in the object properties or in the object data properties. If you have a linked duplicate, for some reason I have like, a, you know, I get the toaster and I go for Alt D, make a linked duplicate. Now anything that I put under the object data properties that is shared. So that means the custom property would be shared across multiple ones. And then I can have still like a different variable under the object property. So that is only to this one object, no matter how many linked duplicates there are. So for this case, it doesn't really matter. Just thought I'd show you that because that means, you know, you can do a lot of cool things with it. So let's just go with object properties. And here I click new. And now we have this variable. Let's click the uh, settings icon. It's a float by default, meaning it can have decimal values. So it can be 0 0.5687. Integer would be full values, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. We can name this heat. The default is 1. It goes from 0 to 1, which is pretty much what we want. So we click OK. And then I'm going to right click and select copy data path. Here in the material, I select this one where I had this toast metal glow. And let's see, right now 0 is glowing, 1 is not glowing. So let's just switch that around real quick. So 0 is metal, 1 is glowing. And now I right click, select add driver. I only want the simple value that I plug in. I don't need any math to do it that because it goes from 0 to 1 which is exactly what we need for the shader factor and here I switch to single property and now here I just select the toaster so where is the property that I'm gonna plug in sitting it's sitting on the toaster and path I'm gonna hit Control V to paste it and now we have pasted these properties so now when we go into the toaster and we go from 0 to 1 we are driving the factor of this material and now comes the really cool part because we can use this value and plug it into other places such as the toast lights so here I'm just gonna right click once again copy data path so it's copied to my clipboard then I choose one of the lights that's sitting in here in the toaster so I did that for EV so it can simulate the light from the emission, which you don't really get in EV. And here in the object data properties where we have the light, I can right click in the power tab and choose add driver. That brings us this little window. And this time I want a scripted expression because I don't want to go between zero and one. I want to be a bit more complex. On a side note, if you right click and choose Open Drivers Editor, then the window doesn't always disappear as soon as you stop hovering over it, which can preserve your sanity. So this is exactly the same here, right? So scripted expression. Here we're going to go single property. Once again, choose the toaster and Control V, paste the data path. And we can see the value right now is one. And it said variable plus 5.6, which is not really what we want, right? So here we can have our expressions like a math formula. 
and VAR variable, that's what we defined here. So in this case, it's the heat of the toaster. And it makes a lot more sense if instead of plus, we just simply multiply it. So zero is going to give us zero. And if the heat is one, we're going to get 5.6, which is the value that we defined before for the maximum. So we just paste that here. And now we see it's 5.6. And let me show you the light a bit more clearly. I go into Word and just make the background dark. And now when I choose the toaster object properties and go from zero to one, you can see the lights that we defined here, they're gonna stop disappearing. Now when I go back into the light, let's see which one was a toast side light. You can see is it is a link duplicate. There should be another one that uses this area 005 data. <laughs> Right, so toast side light, that's the name of the object that is unique. But just like, like the toaster is using the uh, toast mesh data, this is using the area 005 light data. So there should be a second one using it. Uh, not this one, but oh yeah, this one. And the cool thing is here, you can see it also copied the driver. Then I have the toast up light, that's a single user. So we can just go in here add driver and do the same. Instead of plus, we multiply it. Single property, to toaster, paste it. And done. Now it's also using the value that it gets from the toaster. Now we can go one more step ahead and that is instead of always having to go inside here and uh, like edit driver and then play around with the values, we can give it a custom property here. And just like with the toaster, there are two places we can do it. Either under the object, that means this single object is gonna have its own unique value, or we can just say, you know what, all the ones that share the light data, let's do it in here. So I'm gonna select this one. That's not the link duplicate. Oh yeah, let's actually link up the third light that we have with the other ones. So let's see. I'm going, I have this single user selected. Now I shift click on another light. I'm going to go control L and I'm going to say link object data. And now we have three users, right? And they all use this area 005 data. So can see the driver got copied and I'm going to make a custom property under here and let's go into edit uh, float is good name should probably be intensity minimum zero maximum 100 that's not enough let's go for like 100 we can also use soft limits that means you can drag the slider in the editor from zero to let's say 100 but I can always go and type in 300. Now just a little bit more user-friendly. Obviously we can just go like 0, 300, don't need the soft limit. Now you know how it works, okay. So from zero to 300, and we don't really need that, let's go 500. So we have this intensity here, and now we want to use this in our driver. So I'm gonna go into Open Drivers Editor, and we can just use a second variable here. Uh, super easy, just go add input variable. And now we have a second one. Let's call this INTE for intensity. And here we don't want to choose the object. We want to choose the, let's see, the light, because this is the kind of stuff that we're working on. Oh, and I should have copied the data path. So right click, copy data path and in here I'm going to choose the area 005 because that's the data that we're working on. We no longer care about these single objects. And now I'm going to go control V intensity and you can see it worked and we should also use it in the expression right. So var that's still our toaster heat. We can also call this like toast heat. Then of course you have to make sure to call it the same here, toast, heat, 
So we're going to say toast seed multiplied with I-N-T-E, right? So whatever names you define here, that's what it's going to give you. And you can see the driver value is 1. I think we have to use self. No, the intensity is actually set to 1. Um, yeah, now we start dragging it up and now we can change the intensity. So we can use this to play around with like, you know, trying to find the right value. Maybe not completely in the dark. Maybe I say, yeah, I want it more intense. And I just have to go into one light now, edit this. And then of course, especially when I animate the scene, I can go in the toaster and I can go zero to one. And let's see, we can go into layout. Let's go into preview. And let's make the scene one more dark, one more time, maybe point one. Now we can easily animate this, right? I can go in here, I have the toaster selected. Custom properties, heat, and I can hit I. So now I insert a keyframe. And maybe here I have 60, I think I have 30 frames per second. Now I can set this to one and I hit I. And now when we play this animation, it starts glowing, the material changes and it's all just a simple value. And so if we go into like the graph editor, when we adjust this, we don't have to go into, oh crap, now we have to adjust every single light and maybe there are different materials using this. We have this one value here. Uh, we can play around with the graph editor. They want to have this happen faster or sooner or something like that, right? Okay, this is it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, criticism, questions, just drop a comment below. And of course, subscribing to this channel, liking this video, that would really help me out. And then in the next videos, we are going to continue with the toaster. We're going to do the normal toaster animation. And then of course, we're going to turn this into a robot that's like going to have these arms coming out and catch the toast and just maybe even throw the toast around or something. I don't know. We're going to see. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Goodbye.